I'm in Lincoln, which is the uh, eastern side of um, Great Britain, of uh, actually of England. And uh, I'm at a place called Frisian Shore. Now today it's part of the um, RSPB, which is Royal Society for Prevention of uh, Birds, or the Protection of Birds, I should say. And back in the 1940s, this was set up as an emergency um, coastal defence area. So let's go along and have a look at uh, what's left of it. Now this bunker you see is uh, classed as a Type 22 bunker. You can see the uh, loopholes down there. This is uh, the FW3 Type 22 pillbox. Uh, FW3 basically means the Directorate of Fortifications and Works and this one is uh, very common to be honest with you, this Type 22 uh, and I'll show you around inside and then I'll show you what uh, different things are. As you see this wall is the middle and it separates all parts of this um, pillbox so and this is just in case a bullet um, comes through the um, uh, loopholes and hits one of these walls. The idea is you to try and stop it ricocheting. So for instance, army of the bullet comes through there. It's tried to stop anything ricocheting around if it hits the wall. Now obviously, you never know if it's gonna work or not because these things weren't tested. Um, also, if you look at this shelf, these are shelves where you can put weightments so you can rest your arm on and you've got a gun pointing at the enemy. Now you see the loophole there, on the outside it's very narrow, probably about, I don't know, 300 millimetres uh, by 300 or uh, 12 inches by 12 inches and it's a very small opening and um, it's obviously designed to make the hole as small as possible so the enemy can't fire inside it. In total there's 153 of these coastal emergency coastal batteries set up uh, in order to fill the gaps in between the rest of the coastal batteries along the um, United Kingdom coastline. Um, they were mainly set up to try and cover uh, possible landing spots um, like for instance round here I think the the port is Boston if I remember rightly so these coastal batteries are set up to try and protect that area um, they set them up in 1940 under the possible threat of invasion from the Nazis after, they've, um, after they overran Europe. Now if you notice, for instance, that uh, pillbox there, how high it is, we're about 10, 15 foot up here, slopes down, there's obviously a concrete path there now, but at one time this used to be the water line as far as I um, have read. Now all that now is marshland. So the coastline would have started just where that uh, path is. Besides being a, a coastal battery, it was also an holding area um, for shipping, especially merchant shipping. The Navy would probably bring them here uh, and then the guns would cover them uh, in case the uh, merchant ships were probably hostile. The Navy would no doubt check all the paperwork and search the actual merchant ship to make sure that it was okay, legitimate, and then whatever action was appropriate next. Now what you're looking at is um, what they call the hold fast. These are obviously the nuts and bolts that hold this gun in place. Now these guns were pretty old, they were affected from the First World War, they were from scrap um, ships from the First World War and uh, they were whatever they had at the time from four inch to six inch uh, caliber and one of the reasons why that is because when we evacuated uh, France 
in uh, 1940. We left a vast amount of our stuff over in uh, France, so we had to make do with whatever we could. If you look at the roof, the roof was designed to make it look like some kind of a house. This, the idea of that is just to try and um, disguise it from enemy aircraft so they'll just think it's a house and walk bomb it. Mind you, with a six inch gun sticking out the front, I can't see they, they, they wouldn't miss. This to me, this the back of here looks like a fire blast wall. A lot of gun emplacements had this type of uh, wall in place, including the Germans. And um, loopholes as well. I presume if the enemy were landing, at least they could hide behind here and carry on firing at the, uh, the enemy. Also, if the bombs dropped, then at least they could hopefully get behind this, uh, this wall for some protection. Now, there's other stuff behind this wall, but unfortunately it's, it's private land, so I, I'll, I'll try and show you a picture uh, of what's behind it, but um, otherwise we can't really explore it. Again, I hold fast for a, a four to six inch gun, and uh, if you notice the roof, how it's shaped, I to try and disguise it from enemy aircraft. This pillbox actually looks like um, probably where the um, infantry slept. It's like living quarters. The reason that is because you've got a fireplace here and you've got some ventilation here, some ventilation shafts. So it looks as though the more than likely would have lived in this bit here. Now, over there, it's possibly it could be two bunks at one stage and behind you as well, the same as them over there. But uh, this definitely looks like some kind of uh, infantry um, living in quarters. This um, gap behind the gun emplacement, which is to the upper left, uh, is more likely probably to store shells so they could load the guns quicker. Now we're going to have a look at probably where the uh, ammunition was stored. There's a fire blast wall to give this um, building some protection in case of um, any stray bombs or any bombs hit it. This building that stands behind that fire blast wall looks like ammo storage to be honest with you. Looking at it, it's got some good big recesses with some quite what 300 mil or one foot thick walls, and there's three compartments to it. Now, the normal kind of the doors are missing, but more than likely they've been taken away for scrap anywhere. This is very similar to the one at the Huddersfield Heavy Anti Aircraft Battery that I did on a different video. To my left, your right, is the building where I've just been in regarding its possible um, storage area. This is another fire blast wall. It actually surrounds all three sides of this building. Let's have a walk round. Yep, fire blast wall around all three sides of this. 
obviously again if there's any uh, if they're trying to bomb this place and they happen to it the other side of this wall it's going to protect this bit this is obviously very important because if this goes up a lot of the um, I think a lot of the battery will go up as well especially surrounding bits of the battery so this is protected as best it can so it's got three around either side and then one of the front as well I've noticed on these loopholes here, which I mentioned before, um, they're quite high up actually. Now, I'm assuming they are definitely loopholes, they must have something to stand on. Looks like it's been turned away, so it could have been a wooden platform or something like that, but there's nothing there now. Now they say that um, one of these guns is equal to three ship guns, or three ships. And the reason that is, is it's pretty obvious. These are land-based, so they're pretty static. So they, once they get the coordinates, the distance right, they can just pobble these ships where if a ship's coming past and it's in rough sea, it's going to be up and down, it's going to be left, right and centre, it's going to be a not very stable platform to fire a gun from. So I can see what they mean by one shore battery is equal to three ships. This next pillbox we're looking at is a local Lincolnshire pillbox apparently. It's a three bear pillbox and it's to defend the whole of this, um, of this uh, particular course line. Or I should say these, uh, these other pillboxes as well. Now it has an open uh, emplacement with like a spigot to put a, a, a machine gun on just to as an anti-aircraft uh, machine, uh, machine gun sorry. And I think it's so that if for instance they get low-flying uh, aircraft, German aircraft coming trying to strafe this place, then at least this open emplacement here with a spigot in the middle and the machine gun should theoretically be on it, then obviously they'll defend it from any low-flying low aircraft. Let's go inside and have a look. Now this is the open emplacement where I'm on. This is the spigot. There's a hole in the top. So no doubt a machine could be dropped in and obviously fired whichever way it wanted to be because it's got 360. So if there's a low flying aircraft trying to strafe the battery, then at least it's got some protection in trying to stop in that. And you can see what, in what side one of these sections. Um, again, very similar to the Type 22 I showed you before. The loopholes, it's got three loopholes, one the back, one the middle, one on the side, sorry, and one on the front. And it's got little uh, shelves as well to probably rest while you put uh, a gun there or a machine gun. I think this is one of the such light -like, um, um, emplacements. I don't know what, uh, I've not a clue what that tank is inside there, but uh, this one's more likely to be observation. Just here. This is below the uh, such light um, inside it actually. Now the only thing I can think of with this it's possibly that it's a fuel storage tank and the pipes that have been cut off at the front more than likely would have been probably a little generator there to generate the power to um, get the search light working uh, when it's necessary. There is two brackets either side and something uh, maybe metal holdings there. I wouldn't be surprised there'd be a plate there. Now, if they were either bobbing them or they're strafing them, more than likely they could lift a, a metal plate up to give it some protection. That's the only thing I can think of. Yeah, it looks like it is. Same as this side as well. That's the same. <clears throat> and... Uh, on this side so it looks as though they could lift metal plates up and give the person inside here some protection against any bombing or strafing now apparently um, these when they were first built were built uh, uh, the concrete was quite white so what they did was the uh, they rubbed soil into it any sharp corners they rubbed soil and um, and um, grass uh, tried to break up the or tried to make them look a bit darker than what they really were 
the stones in it there, them big stones, could be that he um, broke up the reflection of any shipping coming past, or maybe any aeroplanes, so it, it was hard to detect and just give this coastal battery a bit more protection. This looks like um, the possibly such like living area. There's a, um, I'm assuming, I'm only saying, I don't know if there is or not, it could have been a chimney at some point. This is what it looks like anyway. I had a book on my hands. Um, well, once in German, and now it's converted into English and no doubt other languages. And it's a uh, German invasion plans for the United Kingdom set way back before uh, 1940. Now, it looks in this book is that the Germans have done quite a, an in depth study of the United Kingdom. They know the terrain, they know the mountainous areas, they know the flatlands, they know the wetlands. They know the population, they know what we eat, what we drink, they know the sections of different, they know the defences as far as I can see. And um, so in this book, it's laid out of what Germany were going to do regarding uh, invading our country. So I'm going to read out a small section of this, uh, which refers to the fens, which are where we are now. And hello, cat. And um, I'll let you know what it uh, says, obviously. The fens. At around 4,000 square kilometres, the Fenland is the only true plain of any considerable size in England. The population is divided between medium-sized villages on the islands and highland silt deposits, linear and single street settlements, and some small market towns. Population density is generally somewhere around 50 per square kilometre. There is no industry apart from brickworks around Peterborough. The water supply system is not good, the villages obtained their water from shallow wells and towns use filtered river water. Military evaluation. The numerous dikes and drainage ditches pose an obstacle to troop movement. In addition, many areas are liable to flooding. Sources of cover are very scarce, few clusters of trees and settlements. Insufficient vantage points are available on the ground, except for church towers. The region is well placed to provide provisions for the troops because around here is very agricultural. So if they had invaded, they would have used probably used this uh, to grow their own food. Well, I hope you like some of the history of um, Freeston Shore and what it was built for beginning of 1940. And um, hope to see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again.